Hello, boys and girls. I'm so glad you've joined me again today. You might have noticed I'm wearing the special apron that means we're going into the kitchen today. So let's start off with our good morning song and then we'll head into the kitchen. Are you ready? Let's go. Good morning, good morning, I see your happy smile. Good morning, good morning, let's stay here for a while. Let's clap. We are all at school today, we are all at school today. 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 Well, today we're going to be baking something that's called chocolate chip cookie dippers. And they're called dippers because we can take one and dunk it in some milk before we take a bite. I hope you're going to like them. Follow me now into the kitchen and let's get started. Here we are boys and girls in my kitchen and we're getting ready to make chocolate chip cookie dippers. Mm, the reason they're called dippers is because after they're baked and they're all cooled off, you can take one of them and dip them in some milk before you take a bite. Well, remember to get started working in the kitchen, you need to first wash your hands. I've already done that but make sure that you do it before you get started. The next thing we want to make sure to do is preheat the oven. So moms and dads, if you'll do that for your kids, we want to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. All right, let's get started. I have all my ingredients. And right now you're looking at a picture of the ingredients so that you can measure it out and have it ready to go. Remember, if you have the time to let your children measure, it'll be that much more exciting of an adventure and they'll be able to be using math skills while doing it. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm gonna take one cup of brown sugar and add it to my bowl. Next, I'm gonna add one quarter cup plus two tablespoons of white granulated sugar. And then I'm gonna add three quarter cup of softened butter. Three quarter cup is one and a half sticks of butter. So let me add that in. Use my little spatula to get every little bit. I'm gonna put my paddle on and let's mix it together. We wanna to make sure it gets nice and creamy before we add the next step. The next step is gonna be two eggs. And this time, I didn't have them ready because I thought I would crack them with you. So take one egg, crack it on the side of the bowl, put your thumbs in the crack and open it up. Now I'm gonna do my second egg. Crack it on the side, put in your thumbs, open it up, and there's my second egg. All right, it's looking good in there. So I'm gonna add my two eggs. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, it's looking good. Now I'm going to take my dry ingredients. It's two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add to it three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder, and three quarters of a cup of kosher salt. I said three quarters of a cup, I mean three quarters of a teaspoon. That would be way too much salt. All right, three quarters of a teaspoon. Okay, if you remember from my 
sugar cookie recipe, we take a whisk and we blend it all together with the flour. All right, now we're ready to add the flour to my bowl. I'm going to lower my bowl and I'm going to slowly add it in. Okay, now all the flour is in. I'm going to rise up my bowl and let's start mixing it together. While that's mixing, I wanted to show you how I got my pan ready. It's a 9 by 13 pan and it needs to be lined with parchment paper and leave a little bit of a rim all around it. So when I work with parchment paper, sometimes it's stubborn and it doesn't want to stay in the pan. It keeps popping out. So what I do is I spray a little bit of cooking spray in the pan and then I put the parchment paper in so that it sticks to the pan. All right. Oh, that's looking good. The last thing that we're going to add is three quarters of a cup of mini chocolate chips. scrape off all the dough because we don't want to waste any. It's too delicious. All right. And now I'm going to scoop it all out into my prepared pan. Here it comes. Mmm, do you see all those chocolate chips? That looks so good. Okay. <clears throat> well now, we're gonna wanna spread that around. So you can use a knife or you can use the back of a spoon. I happen to have a little frosting spreader, so I'm gonna use that. But a knife or a back of a spoon will work just as well. All right, and I want to spread it around inside my pan. Make sure you really push it into the corners. And we want to make it as even as we can inside this pan. The reason we're using the parchment paper is because we don't want the cookies to get stuck inside the pan. It makes it easier to pull the whole thing out when we get ready to cut all the pieces. All right, so that's what it looks like. Can you see that? But guess what, we are not done. I have a cup of chocolate chips that I'm gonna put on the top. Wow, that's a lot of chocolate chips. Spreading them all around. Now, I can either take my spoon again, but because my hands are clean, I'm gonna just gently push the chocolate chips into the dough a little bit. And that way it helps me spread out the cookie dough a little bit better. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? All right, it is ready to go into the oven now. And it's going to stay there for 20 minutes. So now would be a great time to go wash your hands and get yourselves all cleaned up and come back and join me and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. I'll see you soon. Thank you for coming back boys and girls. So I've taken it out of the oven and look I wanted you to see that I made two different kinds so that you can decide which one you'd rather have. The first one that we made together we made in a 9 by 13 pan. The second one that I made I did in a larger baking sheet. This one is 
12 by 17. So it's up to you if you want a softer, gooier cookie or a crunchier dipping cookie. When it comes out of the oven, the reason we have the parchment a little bit longer is so we can just pick it up and take it out of the pan. Now look at the difference in sizes of my pans. I wanted you to see why they look different. Okay. Now, I want to show you the best way to cut to get even pieces. Come in a little closer. So you're going to cut in half. Then you're going to cut in half. Now I'll have four even pieces. Now I'm going to take one of those pieces and cut that one in half. And now I'm going to cut three even pieces on each side. Look at now. They all look pretty even. And this gave me 24 pieces of cookies. So just to show you, here is the thicker, gooier one. And here is the thin, crispier one that you can dunk into your milk before you take a bite. It's your choice depending on what pans you have and what you prefer. Well, thank you for baking with me. I think you're going to love these. But now let's head back into the other room so we can get ready to say goodbye. Follow me. Thank you boys and girls for baking with me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And the house smells delicious. I can't wait to have a cookie. Well, I wanted to update you on what's happening with our hummingbirds. It's been very exciting. So I have four pictures that I wanna show you. The first picture that you're looking at shows you both of the hummingbirds sitting snugly in their nest. But you'll see it's getting a little bit tight in there because they're growing up so big. The second picture that you're looking at is both of the hummingbirds standing out on the edge of the nest. They're getting up their courage to fly away. The third picture that you're looking at shows you that one has flown away and the last one is there waiting, getting ready to fly off. In the final picture, you'll see we're back to our empty nest. The hummingbirds are gone and the nest is ready for some new hummingbird eggs. These hummingbirds were the fourth batch that have been born in that nest. So hopefully we'll have more in the future. Well, that's the story of our hummingbirds. They're now gone. I wish they were still here, but I think they're flying around my house. So they're not completely gone. Let's get ready to sing our goodbye song, boys and girls. And I brought Corgi with us again so that we can sing together. Corgi, are you ready? Do you want to sing with us? Okay, here we go. It's time to say goodbye to our friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. So just smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Goodbye. Are you ready to blow a kiss? Okay, here we come. Maybe you can blow a kiss back to us too. Ready? Let's do it together. Mwah. Goodbye, boys and girls. We'll see you next time.